I, I will I will tell you all the ins and outs and uh, uh, but, uh, da, 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 da. No, why is this not working? Right, okay. All right, okay, we're going to get started. So uh, I, I would like to start off by saying that Pete called me the other day and uh, he, he said he said Sandra had to go with him. Pete's in hospital because he fell over and banged his head. Oh no! Oh, yeah. um, so, so I said, "Oh look, Pete, that's really careless of you." I said. He said, "Yeah, no, you go on, go on." He just phoned Sandra; she had to go on him as well. <laughs> oh gosh, it must be bad if they've kept him in. Yeah, he, uh, apparently, uh, yeah, he, he 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 did he did call me and he said, "Oh, he he didn't sound in a sorry state." I've got to be honest with you; he sound he sounded sort of, you know, pseudo perky. And uh, he, he he basically said, look, I, I can't join on Tuesday night. Um, and he's got a urology problem as well. So oh. I think I, I think that 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 may have affected his balance or something. So, oh, gosh. so obviously, that's why there's no Sandra tonight. I don't know where I don't know where David is tonight. I, I don't oh. know where Claire is tonight. But anyway, let, let's do news tonight. Margaret. Yeah. Any news from you tonight, darling? Well, I've just been reading from our library a book the about, library. about yes. Ireland, early Ireland, um, and I didn't know they had hundreds of Cranocks. Cranocks? Mm. Uh, I, I, islands, artificial islands, yeah, go on. Hundreds of them. And, um, uh, yeah, I didn't know that the word cran, cran is Irish for tree. No, no I I didn't know that either. No, I I, I had no idea. Did yeah. you know that, Andy? No, I didn't. Cran is Irish for tree. What? Uh, and there are some from the first millennium BC. Yes. Are the earliest ones, and um, the cran meaning tree dinner means the amount of wood that was used. Mm. Oh, right, right, okay, right. Um, in a, in a in a sense in a sense um i would say that um star car is actually you could class it as a, a cranog landscape oh yes um uh, we, we we do we do actually have lots of cranogs in scotland we've got maybe two or three identified in the whole of wales not many identified in england but i, I like the fact that you brought uh, the good old island in again so okay. I, i'm glad you did that you've done something right for once yeah, um, changed, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, that that's that that that's 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 really good. So, um, uh, I would say that. Uh, so we got me sounding twice here. Right, Anne, Anne, anything you'd like to say, darling? No, I've got no news. Sorry. Okay. What What about you, Andy? No, nothing to add this week. Thank you. Uh, and what What I'd like to know is tell me more about this conference that you mentioned at the beginning. Uh, it's the uh, um, it's, I can't remember who's who it run by. Is it the it's the Lake District um, Parks Authority? Is it them that's uh, yeah? The um, I can't remember what is it National Sorry. Park Authority, Lake District National Park Authority. Uh, and and what, 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 what is the theme of the conference? Uh, there, there, there are lots of um, items being talked about. It's all about archaeology in the Lake District over the last year and previous years. And the outcome. All oh, right, good. So good. Uh, they're doing a bit about High Street, about the um, was Roman there road. or was there not a Roman road up there? Oh, uh, yeah, we 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 discussed this the other day, and and uh, do, do you know yeah. what? Do you know what? It's uh, I think the conclusion is is that uh, um, it, it it's more likely to be Roman because they just adopted it, and that's basically it. Mm. I, I think I think the question should be: Would the Romans have used it to get to A to B? And you you both mm. basically answer yes. Yeah, it was there. Um, and I think that old that old quote: When the soldiers marched into Damascus in 1917, and somebody asked why you were in Damascus, <clears throat> um, the British general said, um, "They're there because they're there." Mm -hmm. Right, um, Drina. Anything you'd like to say, darling? We're going to get started. No, thank you. No. Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping you were going to say something because I just needed a, a, a second. I've got, well, well I've, I got, I've got my phone fixed at last. Hey. Oh, have you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to what say, type they... of phone? Yeah, go on. 
I was just going to say that I've got the uh, the timetable up for that. They're doing the archaeology of Riverlands as well. One of the talks um, is loaves and fishes, the mills and fish ponds of Shap Abbey. Um, and uh, recent survey work on Shap and Brampton Common, which is what uh, Margaret was just talking about there. An assault sure. on Ambleside, a Roman Iron Age battle rediscovered. Oh, wow. oh nice. I'll, yeah, investigations of the Roman road. I'll take the high road. I'm guessing that's again more of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Roman have you, have, have you seen that um, small villages program yes. with Ravenglass? Yes. Wasn't it good? That was brilliant. That yeah. It yeah. was really interesting. Yeah, I have to go. <laughs> I've yes. been near it, but not in it. So well, you yeah. could go on the train, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, it's right next to the station at the train. Oh, is so, it? Yes, oh, right. yeah, it's really I, close. I have seen the bathhouse. So we mm. went um, yeah. last uh, earlier this year. We went and had a look at the bathhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, sorry. Yeah, go on. No, carry on. Like, no, I just thought Ambleside's not a village, though, is it? Not Ravenglass anything. we're talking about. Ravenglass. Oh, I think I think meant, oh, God, I've got... Yeah, we've moved on now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, the bathhouse in Ravenglass. Sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to move house on. Bathhouse Ravenglass. Yeah. Right, okay. Anyway, um, a small numbers tonight. So, um, yeah, that, that's life. So, uh, uh, it's been mentioned, this site called Warren Field. And um, th this is going to be, this is going to be a stab in the dark. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so, so unusual. The reason why it's so, so unusual, I, I, I don't expect to be doing this type of stuff when we're looking at Mesolithic. It seems too advanced to be doing the in the Mesolithic period. But as we know, everything that we've seen in the Mesolithic period is so advanced that, we've, that it's blown our minds. So I thought, right, let's just check this in towards the end of our Mesolithic stuff. We're back in Scotland, so that's really, really good. And um, it, it, in a way, in, in many ways, we, we visited the Mesolithic period all the way across Britain, which is brilliant, from the Isle of Wight over to Ireland, to Shetland, to Scotland, to Wales, to um, um, down, down on the south coast, um, east coast, west coast. It's, it, in fact, we, we, we've, we've done really, really well. We've done caves, we've done landscapes, we've done underwater sea, we've done coast, we've done woodlands. Of, we, we've done it all, right? And, and maybe we should do something strange. So that's what we're doing today. So I, th I, think, I think the best thing to do is try to, try to figure where the hell we're going. Uh, Isle of Man. Is there any Mesolithic stuff in the Isle of Man? There's always one in there. <laughs> Just wondered. Right, okay. Uh, I, I, Isle of Man, yes. We, we've, uh, all right then, for you, right? Uh, for you, just because you're being awkward, right? Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll have to do something on the Isle of Man, right? So, so okay. I, I, I did, I did have it. Oh, there we go. That's what I want. There we go. Yeah. Right there. I want to show you where we are. Okay. Let's uh, stay on web. Good. Right. So uh, if we if we type, I, I did actually have all this set up earlier on a moment ago. So I just, um, right. So if we just type in Warren Field, I had it all in you. But anyway, uh, it, it's a site near, it's a site near Aberdeen. So, so if we do that, hopefully this will work. Oh, there it is. Got it. Bingo. Bingo. Right. Okay. Oh, we did. We nearly had it. Oh, there we go. Right. Go. Ah, there. Okay. So, right. So, so there we are. There it is. This is a site near um, Craith's Castle. So we go back out again. We keep going. Aberdeen. So it's near Aberdeen. So this is a site. And we got the, uh, the Cairngorms where we've mentioned before as well. And if, if we just want to do a little bit of an overview, let's just do a little bit of a tiny overview. Um, and we, we think we, we think on the the south sort of eastern side there of that map there. Uh, no, not southeastern side. Oh, God, we've ended up in Wales. Uh, mm -hmm. If we go if we go on the southwestern side where, where you've got all those those islands, we've, we've got uh, the island of um, um, Honestly, and we've got the Isle of Skye and Uist and all those different sites that we've looked at and we've um, 
we, we've been looking at that landscape and then we sort of go went over to and we mentioned a few things on Orkney and we, we've gone over to Shetland um, and then we sort of go back in again if I can if I can oh this is not working out well and then we sort of get to Aberdeen again um, and there we've got those little yellow patches there that, that's the Cairn Gorms are sort of over on the um, left hand side of Aberdeen that's the site we're going to be looking at today Warren Field uh, so that's where I want to go. And what we do have today is 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 we're looking at a piece that's been written by current archaeology. But before we do that, I've got some other blurb I'd like to do. So if we go off that one and go there. Come on, let's just stop that. Uh, oh, oh, God. Right, there we go. There, uh, we've done that. Good. I think this. I think that Mesolithic Time Lords, a, a monumental hunter-gatherer calendar, at Warren Field. So just just focus on those words a minute. Mesolithic Time Lords, Mesolithic. That's the word. Hunter-gatherer. That's the next word. Calendar at Warren Field. Now, okay. The reason why that's rather interesting is you expect you expect to be talking about calendars and things that go bump in the light in the Neolithic period, but not in this period, in the Mesolithic period. It's like we don't we don't really expect to be talking about landscape archaeology when we talk about Mesolithic period, because with there's not much in the Mesolithic period to look at, is there? But there is, there's loads. Where in fact we're we kind of we truck loads of information on the Mesolithic period now, but 20 years ago we wouldn't have had much. So what we've got to do now is we've got to think right. We've got to rewrite our minds and and everything about what we're feeling and seeing about the Mesolithic period. So there it is. Interesting enough, they're standing in a load of pits that are in fact in this field at Warren Warren Field. So. So I've got a bit of blocked up nose, actually. So sorry about that. So uh, Warren Field, Mesolithic. It, right. You, I'm going to use these words. A Mesolithic calendar monument dating to 10,000 years ago. Now, as a category of archaeological site, calendar monument is something that you don't usually hear about. In fact, other than me saying it now, it's the, it's the only time that I've ever come across the word, the, those words. Three words, Mesolithic calendar monument. I sort of make that a little calendar monument. What the hell is that? So this dates to at least 10,000 years ago, where, it'd be, where they've been sectioning those, those shallow trenches that they are now, or some of them a little bit deep. When I say trenches, pits, pits, pits. So this, now, if you can get your mind around this, this, these, this is 12 pits. This landscape includes 12 pits believed to correlate with phases of the moon and used as a lunar calendar. But immediately your mind goes and you're thinking, well, you know, we, we think about this when we, when we talk about the likes of Stonehenge and we, we go on about that, but not in the Mesolithic period. It's great. It's a great piece, this. And there is an aerial photograph of this landscape We'll just we'll scroll through this up and down because there's some great stuff in this in this piece, and what we do have, um, and that's what they're saying. So in other words, they, they this the, the pits in the ground. There you go. The the right the, this is the the excavations of these pits. Right, so these pits in the ground correlate to phases of the moon lunar calendar, and. Why am I doing this today? Because I just thought I wanted to, I want to expand our, expand our minds on trying to maybe understand another side of the Mesolithic period that we wouldn't even believe existed. <laughs> so these pits, you can, you can see where they're sort of lying. They're sort of, um, they're, they're not many meters apart usually. Uh, and, but, and, and they're in this field and you're thinking, well, how the hell are these survived? But they have. So let, let's just let's just try and do some of the keywords. It is considered to be the oldest lunar calendar yet found. Now, that that leads us into 
th- that leads us into the idea of, of of what is a lunar calendar. Do we use lunar calendars? Does anyone u- use lunar calendars out there? I I don't. I, I you know when I look at the sky you, at, at night you've got a full moon, half moon. Um, Time you know, tables. Thank you, Andy. Oh, but I, I don't. I don't use anything like that. I really don't. So you know, I, 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 yeah, Andy's right. You, you, you would associate the, the processes of the moon and the the lunar calendar associated with uh, tide timetables. But uh, Andy, Andy goes out to sea. I don't. There I, is I, some I just... gardeners, Carl, that plant by the moon. Now. Now. Now, yeah. I don't know. I don't understand it, but they pick a time of the moon to plant whatever. I was hoping you'd tell us more. No, I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, that's going to work for next week. Thank you. Right. (laughs) Right. Now, now, now Andy's put, now Andy's put me on the spot. I want to put him on the spot. So Andy, explain a little bit more to the rest of us about the, 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 the tides and the timetable and, and, and all the rest of it. But I'll be it, Andy, that this is not going to be, this is nowhere near the sea. However, mm. um, you you give us that process. Give us a little bit of a process. Well, you get the uh, obviously the tides come and go twice a day, and the, yes. the the height of them depends on whether it's a full moon or a loon or a, a new moon. They're called the spring tides. Um, so every two weeks, you obviously get a, um, a full moon or a new moon. You've got the higher tides. Um, yes. And it's the effect of the gravitational pull, obviously, of the, the, the thing. But uh, you can see that happening. If you know, if you see the same phases of the moon, you will know what the tide is doing and when it's coming. So. Dad, tell you what it says on the internet. Yeah. Mm. The amount of moonlight at different times also influences the growth of plants. Mm. As the moonlight increases, it stimulates leaf growth. And after the full moon, the moonlight decreases putting energy into the plant roots. Wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's more complicated. That's than why they do it. Yeah. So, okay. I still don't understand it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so uh, do you, do you understand it, Drina? Right. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Light. So, light. Light. All about light. 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 Yeah. Okay. So it was originally that now, Right, we right. I thought somebody was going to say something else. Right, so, so this lands, this this archaeological landscape, as we'll call it, which again, right, I can't, I can't stress this anymore because this is again, this is territory that is. Some, I never do anything like this. I don't, I don't do this type of thing. It's not what I do. Right, but I wanted to do it today because I just thought it, it's fair. It, it was fair for me to, to like to do something that was outside my comfort zone. This is way out my comfort zone, but be, because I, I don't do astronomy, I just don't do sort of phases of the moon and solstices and um, all those types of things. It's I right. It's not that I don't believe in them. It's just that I I, I believe they're for another another lecture um, and not these ones. But I, I really wanted to do this because I thought it'd be mentioned a few times. I even think Andy mentioned it, but I know somebody else, a couple of other people in the other classes were keen. So this itself, uh, as a phenomenon, was only discovered um, over the past few decades. And it was first ex- excavated and understood. Right, this, this is a point. If anyone knew about this years ago, right, but the idea of this being associated with with this cycle has only come to us around 2004 when people started to excavate and then try to give us an understanding of these phases right so if you if you look at that little t- table there uh, it's got numbers two three four five six seven um, eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen um and, and, and you then go back to 16, you've got 17, 21. So all, all of these all of these numbers have obviously got um, sort of the symbolic um, parameters of understanding these phases. So again, being awkward doing this, I, we're, we're going to do it. So we... 
it's e- it's easy for it's easy for me to jump in and look at Avery, and I I, c- I could just stand up there and just sort of say, well, if you look at that direction and maybe there, and people think this and that and Stonehenge and uh, look at that alignment and this alignment and so on and so on, that's fine. But I don't expect to get this when we look at the Mesolithic period. That's the point. Mm. So the so what 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 we do. It says the pits align on the southeast horizon and the prominent topographic point associated with sunrise on the mid-winter solstice. Um, Those provided an annual astronomical correlation concerning the passage of time as indicated by the moon and um, the solar year and the associated seasons. So this is is much bigger than just um, a timetable um, to understand uh, the cycles of the um, the lunar calendar. Uh, so, it. So uh, the other the other thing as well is I'm I'm. I, I'm gonna sound I'm gonna sound off about this that you you not only you not only you not only find not to see this in Scotland or anywhere in Britain. Uh, you expect to find something like this when we look at uh, ancient Egypt or. Mesopotamia, but anything like this in Mesopotamia doesn't come for another 5,000 years. So this dates back to 10,000 years ago from the radiocarbon dates in those pits. So that sort of that sort of sense of trying to understand something that is lunar, um, astrological, um, and um, astronomical, um, understanding of the cosmos is something that, to be honest with you, I would not really put into our own in our own box. But then again, that's me sounding bias, which is something that I always try not to do, which I've just done. It was also interpreted as a seasonal calendar because the local prehistoric communities, which rely on hunting, migrating animals, needed to carefully note the seasons to be prepared for a particular food source now weirdly enough i don't know i weirdly enough drina didn't know we were doing this today and she's just basically said that um drina, drina is that right am i am i interpret what you said correctly drina that you just basically said that yeah so the warren the warren field site is particularly significant for its very early date and the fact that it was created by peoples that were se- weren't sedentary, the people that actually moved around. However, we've started to find out that lots of people in the Mesolithic world were fixed in one set spot, rather than being the sort of hunter gatherer people that were moving around all the time. So, uh, I would like to I would like to say this interjection before we go on to this. I would like to say that, you know, we 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 could we could think of this as being uh, something that is within another world. This should be in the Neolithic world. Uh, the 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 title at the top. If we go back there, Mesolithic Time Lord. A monumental hunter-gatherer calendar at Warren Field, Scotland. That that's where we're getting that from. So we, we've we've got to sort of think, and we've got to try and understand what this whole topic means today. And th- this this type of topic topic would be ideal on my Thursday evenings. Where, well, Thursday at six o'clock. And by the way, if anyone ever misses these on Tuesday, they can sign in on seven o'clock. And they, 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 you can just sort of join us then. It's the same class, but obviously, it, it's it's on the base on the back of that that, that uh, you know we, we've already done it um, once before. So, what I'd like to do is go back to that image there, and again, seeing where people. Uh, the diggers stand by each of the pits during the 2000 and 2005 Scottish National Trust excavation, give an idea of the scale of the monument at Warren Field. 
Um, this the this photograph and the work is um, being taken on behalf of the National uh, Trust by Murray Archaeological Services. And when when we when we really think about how how this ties in, we we've we've got to we've got to sort of make sort of we've got to make sort of what why why are we talking about this as being a time traveling thing what 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 is that there and it's this idea that almost almost they were doing something back in the past that we're still doing today as drina mentioned and as andy mentioned and and, and this sort of this whole this whole perspective on trying to understand the landscape is something that we've mentioned him last week, Vince Gaffney, Professor of Landscape Archaeology at the University of Birmingham. We mentioned him, we mentioned him last week, actually. Uh, they've got groups of researchers from Aberdeenshire. And this, this sort of thing, they believe that the dawn of timekeeping stretches back far further than the emergence of the earliest calendars 5,000 years ago, and say, in, in the likes of Mesopotamia. So, what what we do here, we we sort of it, it's a bit of an odd piece. This and I'm going to give it a go and see how we can interpret what I'm just about to go through. And the idea of the idea of timekeeping on a monumental scale, yeah, you know, like in places like Mesopotamia and this one, this one going back ten thousand years ago. But there's an idea. But the idea of timekeeping and sort of um, uh, um, models for showing this on set artifacts, portable artifacts, goes back far, far earlier than this sort of monumental sort of perspective, having monuments like this 10,000 years ago. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to, hang on a minute, we're going to go to this one here. Bingo. Mm. Now, this is an interesting artifact. This bone itself is from a site known as Abri uh, Blancard in France. And this, on a piece of stone, was is believed to date back to 32,000 years ago. Now, you're thinking, well, oh, right. They, they, they believe that this actually represents uh, the engraved sequence of circles is believed to represent the waxing and waning moon as found dating back to uh, uh, dating back to 32,000 years ago. Yeah, it's not made of stone, it's made of bone. Sorry, screwed that one up. Bone, bone plaque, bone, it's made of bone. So in, in the, it's lucky that this has actually survived. So this itself um, was actually found in the 1960s. Is a Paleolithic object from the Dordogne of our region in France. And is the person right in their interpretation of this artifact? Well, they could be, they might be. And why not? Why shouldn't they be? I think one of the things in archaeology is that we, we do dismiss things quite easily. And then again, we like to come up with lots of different stories at the same time as we've been looking at the Mesolithic period. This artifact itself in front of us dates to the Paleolithic period. Um, the person who actually first said that this, this artifact um, was associated with the sequences of the waxing and waning moon was a guy by the name of uh, Alexander uh, Marshak. And Alexander Marshak argued that these engravers manufactured around 32,000 year, years ago could have served as crude calendars. Now, then it sort of, then that sort of opens up a little sort of trap door. And it, what the trap door that opens up is, and I don't know if anyone's actually spotted this. Has anyone actually wondered? Has anyone actually wondered the following? And I've just I just sort of realized this myself. Has anyone actually sort of wondered the following that what we do find is that we, we see all these Venus figures, you know, figures of 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 well burdened women with large breasts, pregnant, and so on, dated back to 28, 30,000 years ago. And what we do, we find carvings on bones, 
uh, anything from 12 to 30,000 years ago and so on. We, we, we find all these things. We find, uh, we, we even come across with that one cave in, in, uh, uh, in Gibraltar, that Neanderthal cave where, where there was markings on the floor and they say they were warning to other people not to go any further into the cave and so on. And it, what, what you do, right, the point I'm trying to make is that if these people were capable of creating art, and they were actually capable of telling us things like these calendars, then why did they have a form of writing? And that brings us that brings us full circle to the other point that we did make. If you remember that instead of using uh, instead instead of using these things as instrumental to telling us things, they could have equally used them to tell us things, and actually they were they were a, a form of art. So telling us telling us what's going on also as art as much as it's telling us what's going on and actually if you want to if you want to say well actually what you're talking about was hieroglyphics yeah but i am talking about hieroglyphics but i'm also talking about what we've got in front of us and also if you want if you want to take this even deeper and further monuments might help us to read uh, the landscape as well in the sense of reading the landscape. What we do, we, ch we chuck the word read in the landscape to basically say, oh, well, we're reading a landscape to say there's a Roman site over there, there's a medieval site there, the Neolithic period, there's the Standing Stone, and there's this and there's that. Yeah, that's reading the archaeological landscape, but actually using all these parameters as a guidance to tell us things. And I think the patchwork of offering us a, 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 a form of record is becoming far more deeper than we could have ever had the gravitas to understand before. We, we actually go further with this. We, we go a lot further with just, we, we go, we go to this is now looking at the 60s and 70s about this object in front of us, not at Warren Field, but this is this is links us directly into Warren Field. And if we read, if we go, current consensus, however, is that these engravings are simple tallies. Just think about what that's just said, that these engravings are simple tallies. But they're not simple, are they? That they're, they're highly learned. I don't like the word simple. Recording observations of lunar events as they unfolded, rather than making predictions about the future. Well, really? Well, what? Hang on a minute. Okay, Andy. What we're going to do? We're going to create a tri we're going to create a tide table, right? And we're not going to use it. Is that what we're going to do? What we're saying is is that. What I'm trying to say is that why can't these people have used things? Why can't they have what in many ways, what is the point in doing things if you're not gonna actually uh if you're not gonna actually um <sighs> right, okay. Um, uh, somebody asked me the other day, they said, Why do you keep a diary? And I said, I do. Oh, what am I gonna do with it? Uh, what we what whatever ever we're gonna do with your diaries that you keep every single year of your life, we're just gonna burn them. And I said, oh, thanks a lot. Uh, but that, that diary itself is my way of recording the world and it's my way of understanding what's going on. And if somebody says, oh, what did you do last week? It's important because I need to know what happened. Then it's written down. Right. So I, I think I think we're really dismissive of the Mesolithic period. But we we guys are not. We are not because we now understand that the Mesolithic is, is highly instructive of a world that we we i'm gonna say it myself i i i thought andy and i andy and i got very excited we thought we're gonna do the mesolithic period but but i get to talk for andy and andy could disagree or disagree i didn't think we would make the mesolithic as interesting as we have but we have i've achieved that um and andy can come back andy do you do, do you agree that this is the, the whole mesolithic stuff for the past over the months has been a lot more instructive than we could have ever thought 
Yes, definitely. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why we love it, because there's, uh, every time we look at it, there's more and more and more and more stuff coming out. So. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. When clear evidence for, for formal lunar calendars does appear when we look 5,000 years ago, it comes from Babylonia that, listen to this, that intellectual powerhouse in the cradle of civilization, what? what makes civilization intellectual or why can't we be intellectual? It, is it really possible that elementary timekeeping had been mastered thousands of years earlier in backward Britain? I think, I think that's a good way of putting it. That's my way of putting it, actually, uh, being re sounding really cynical. So there is no doubt that early groups would have been capable of making necessary lunar, lunar observations as they have with this. So let's get off this now. Let's just sort of move on and we just go with this. Right, okay. Don't, don't obsess with the, 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 the track the marks in the field, but we, we are obsessing with this. And you can see that there's other stuff going on in the field. Uh, the, these, these other marks in the field could be anything from, from Mesolithic, anything, right? Fair enough. What what I'm going to do is I'm going to step off. I'm going to step off the plate a minute. I I, I want to say something else that that is. Uh, I I I believe that because we thought that there's very little about the Mesolithic period out there, we we've made as much as we possibly could with what we have. Unfortunately, I would even disagree with that. We haven't gone as far as we could have, because I was looking at something the other day, and the site. Uh, that we that we looked at a staff in Ireland, they've made some new discoveries, and I thought, right, do I do I do I come back with you? Do 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 I do that? I, 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 otherwise, we're never going to leave the Mesolithic, but I could do. And I, I just thought, if in fact we're not going as deep with this as as we could, we could look at every single pit and what's in it. Is there is there bits of charcoal? Is there it, how how does this pit work? And you know how deep is it? And what's well, I'm not we're not really going into all that. So we could even go deeper. And actually, actually, there's a risk today with me not going as deep as I could do because the evidence is so obvious. Uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is, is that when, when we get Roman archaeology, it's a fort, it's a wall, it's a road, and there's a ditch, and, and, and there's that. And let's just go on to another site because there's loads of it. But then again, there's loads of this. So the word time trials, yeah. There is no doubt that early groups would have been capable of making the necessary lunar observations. Repeated that. After all, when, when, when we think about um, Alexander Marchand's uh, work from France um, back in the 19, 1960s or whatever, uh, shows that undergatherers watch in the skies. Well, no, is that a joke? Of course they were watching the skies. The problem is what we've got to do. We've got to bring up, we've got to drag them screaming out the caves, and we've got to thinking, well, they're not that you know, these are people who ain't wandering around with clubs, these are people who are living and breathing with a very highly complicated, structured world. Now, can I can I just uh, can I just can I just go off on a tangent a minute? Yeah, because I, I want to. I want to say something very important. Hang on, I've got to get my diary. I've, I've got, I've distracted myself a minute because there's something that I need to tell you guys. Because when we did, when we did your lecture last week, and we did it, we 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 did it on uh, Tuesday. We did it on Thursday night. So we obviously did last Tuesday, and. Um, uh, what what are the um, oh god I just I just got to remember I, I got to, I, I, th those words there watching the skies right that that's reminded me that that what I wanted to say on record was was I made a hell of a lot based on la last week's lectures it, it it was it was highly that it answered some of those questions it answered. How we lose all those trees? That that was that was one of the the questions last week answered, right? And that there were other the, there were two other mega things that last week's lecture did answer. Um, and I I just thought I just thought 
what we're really doing, we're, we're on the edge of really understanding what's happening in the Mesolithic period, those great, great changes. And when we start to bring in, when we start to move the lecture away from, back to this lecture, where, where, we, where, we, where we start bringing the lecture back to looking at the skies rather than the sea, that, that gives a much more complicated dynamic to the, <laughs> the Mesolithic period because for, for most of the lectures, we've been obsessed with the water, well, I have, so that's what we've been doing. And we've been obsessed with trees and we've been finding footprints and we've been finding settlements, we've been finding artifacts, we've been, find, we've been looking at Doggerland, we've been, we've been looking at shell mounds and, and all these things. Right? Now, we've moved today's lecture to looking at the skies. Now, this, this itself, sorry, uh, apologies for this, but this itself ties me in with my other lecture that I do each week. It's called The Line, uh, which is looking at the work of Tim Ingold. Uh, last week, I got really, really deep on looking at the line. And and when, when we uh, basically, I said, right, can you, can you understand past landscapes by looking at water that is out in the ocean today and, and we come up with an hour's lecture and i said yes you can you can work out that there's always been movement with the tides you can understand that that water's done damage here and, and the same waters are uh, deposited stuff underneath the surface and so on so if we if we look at the sky now away from the land and the water we're looking at the sky and we're thinking well how could you understand that people were looking up at the sky and the answer is just simply what we're doing. Uh, it, they're making a record on the ground or whether they're making a record within artifacts. It is, it is also unlike this, I will, I'm gonna read this next thing out in a moment, but I just realize this is gonna throw me a bit. So what, what, what we're saying is that with, with the work of Tim, Tim Ingold, he, he believes that this is something that I do. He believes that everything is connected or all, all the layers in the past are connected all the artifacts or all, all the activities, how people thought everything is linked. And you can find evidence for lots of things, in, including physical and mental health. You can find how people thought, how people went about things through everything that you could see out there. And, and naturally that people's relationship with the, with the skies and, and People's real, the sky has already be, always been there. The, the, the sky, the moon, the, the stars, the sun. Okay, forget, forget the silly moon, right? People have been obsessed with, with the sun. And we always talk about people's obsession with the sun. Well, let's be obsessed with the moon. Let's be obsessed with the stars. And this is exactly what we're saying. So here we go. It goes on to say, it is also unlikely that mobile hunting bands would have been blind to or simply uninterested in the opportunities that forward planning would bring. So in other words, uh, what we're saying, that th this, is a, this is a bit, this, this is a bit complicated, not too complicated, but what, what we're saying is that, what we're saying there, that, that people weren't blind. They, 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 there were opportunities to using stuff up there in the sky to help them in their everyday lives in very much what Drina said at the bottom beginning and and I'm thinking that there is something else to be said here our ancestors did record things I said that we're going to keep with that however how do I put this across You've got oral history, yeah? And with oral history, you don't really write things down. But we are saying that there were records kept. So we've got oral history, records being kept. It's a bit like somebody singing and um, you, you know what their voice sounds like, but you're not writing down the voice because you can't really write down a voice. And if these people were able to read the stars, and they were able to read the landscape, then you don't need to write it down. Are we seeing what we're seeing there? So in the past, as we do now, for example, there are people out there who can say, oh, you can eat that mushroom. 
you know how you can eat that mushroom and so on by by smelling and sensing and all the rest of it you can't really put that in a book you've got to actually be physically there with somebody who knows what they're doing so you can't really write that down because there's some things that are so complex that you need to be there right and so so what i'm saying is today you've got several different ways of recording things and one of the ways of recording things is by true experience true transcending experience and this is exactly the same in the past so we it, it is true that in the past two years humanity's created more more literature and more sort of things recorded than any time in the whole history of the planet right and it, it seems to be the same thing happening every two years but but um but what what we what we say what we see is that in the past it's as today there are different way ways that things were recorded and understood it, it's it's the same as wandering down the street and thinking oh I, I don't like that person because they've killed somebody right well you can't you can't really write that in a book i, I that may sound ridiculous but uh, i knew a woman well i don't know if she's still alive but years ago that there was a lady i used to know who used to come to one of my classes and she said she went on she went on the train one day and Fred West was on the train with her. And she she had a sense that he was a killer. Right. Uh, and a, a, a few months later, she watched the news and this guy that she saw on a train that she thought was a killer. Right. She saw him and she said, oh my God, I knew I knew this guy was a killer. I sensed it. I, I, I even. Yeah, you know, I, I think she wrote it down in a diary and so on. So what I'm what I'm trying to get with is. To try us to understand the Mesolithic period uh, in some ways similar to today, because there's different ways of recording things. And once you've understood that, it makes the Mesolithic period a lot easier to understand. Good. Mesolithic hunter gatherers, or the people who lived in the Mesolithic period, would have benefited enormously from being able to anticipate seasonal change with a great deal of accuracy. So there we go. So we're coming to that nice little conclusion, but well, it's not a conclusion because we've got a, still we still got a little bit to go. So before before there was excavation in two thousand and four, before they actually understood these as Mesolithic, and I said that things had been recorded before, but I, I was a bit vague. People people initially went. The, these weren't thought to be Mesolithic when they were first found. They, they were thought to obviously be this Neolithic. They've got to be Neolithic. There's, there's no way that you'd, you'd think that these were Mesolithic in 1976, when these were originally found in a dry summer by aerial photography undertaken by Royal Commission on Ancient Historical Monuments in Scotland. And naturally, these are definitely got to be Neolithic. So they, 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 were, they were never going to be Mesolithic until they were being excavated in 2004. Now, the the one thing um, the one thing that we we can start to think of is that is this as big a picture and as 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 is this as interesting, for example, as the evidence of at Star Car is is this as interesting as the Mesolithic evidence of star car is this is interesting as boulder cliff off the the isle of Wight. now what we are finding is mesolithic large-scale evidence being detected more and more by archaeologists you know when when what we're saying is that the mesolithic period is a period when big things are happening, not just in the Neolithic period, they're happening in the Mesolithic period. So if we if we run that through, and we think right, if if these people had big big poles sticking out of the earth, and and you know they they have places like Star Car, and uh, and they're, they're, they've got large six meter um, sort of diameter buildings. And all these other things that they're doing, what what we are seeing is that it, it's 
what what I'm saying is it's it's far more congregational. It's far more connected with the landscape than we have ever been made to believe. And there's a lot more complicated bits and pieces that we are going to do with this today, but I, I will say that if we think about this site, bring us back to this site now, because, because I've taken us on loads of different tangents. We, we, we think that these are, are the landscapes that we see, are the landscapes that we're, we're seeing with these types of monuments in the Masolithic period, places that brought people together? Did this involve communities and greater numbers of people than previously suspected? Now, that is actually quite a revolutionary statement to make. Because one thing that I really resist, and Andy knows this, and he probably probably can't sometimes work out why. When when we look at Stonehenge and when we look at Avebury and when, when we look at Stanton Drew and when, when we look at Castle Rig and when we look at all these these Neolithic monuments, uh, I resist saying that you know they, they were places that people gathered together to sort of come at certain times of the year. Um, to meet or to celebrate, and I, I resist using those 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 adages because I just think, well, if everybody's going to one spot and they've got a community village over there, which is ten miles away, who's looking after the animals? Who's looking after the crops? Um, who's who's keeping an eye on everything? All you need is one wolf in, and you uh, you've lost everything. People can't afford to get go to these get-togethers. They can't. Okay. Right, you guys were talking about being able to afford things, i.e., fuel and so on, and, and you guys are talking about sharing cars to go to an event, a conference. Well, one of the reasons why you're doing that is that you want to be together, but the other reason is you want to save some money because you're going to be saving petrol and so on. And, and when you think of it that way, these people had even more pressing concerns. If you're all gathered together, then you're going to lose everything. So that's why I resist these things when we talk about the Neolithic period. However, what I'd, what I'd like to do is just basically say to have things like this, you do need more than just two or three people. And who are these people? How have they got time to do this? They've got time to do this because they're pro probably sedentary because they're living within this landscape, which is great. Is it is it an excuse for ritual or tut is there an excuse for party tut is there an excuse for early networking right we do like the word networking because i can hide behind that word it's okay is it a time for making alliances marriages is it a time um that people could do everyday things and so on well we're still living within an age when society is still very much spread out you know, I, I, I've said, obviously, you know, I've admitted that there were many more people living in the Mesolithic period than, than, than we ever thought. Well, actually, a monument like this proves it. This wasn't built by two people on a Wednesday afternoon. You know, there's a lot more going into it. And, uh, you know, I'm building a house at this minute and uh, I, I can't do everything. I, you know, before this lecture this evening, I spent 40 minutes feeding all the animals whilst I was trying to build stuff, whilst I'm trying to feed myself, whilst I'm trying to do that, and whilst I'm trying to do this and all the rest of it, that's just me and I can't do it all. I know I can't. But so to do something like this, now, if, if I if I think about that and I think, right, um, I wouldn't have time to do this, uh, build this in the Mesolithic period because I could do everything else. So who's able to do it? How is it able to be done? And it, the the actual, what I'm getting at and this is the next thing that comes into this. What I'm getting at is the, the ability of resources to do something like this. It was essential It was essential that such gatherings occurred when the local area's natural resources were sufficiently bountiful to support an influx of uh, extra mouths to feed. Well, actually, I'm going to say that another way. To have spare time to do this, to have the opportunity to do this, needs time. 
That's what we're talking about. Christ, this is this is far more in depth than I thought I could do. Pits. Let's let's just look at those pits down into those pits. There we go. While the phases of the moon provide a convenient way of creating uh, 30 day blocks of time, transform the, transforming this knowledge into a means of predicting the change in seasons is not straightforward. Really? Well, I'll explain why. Uh, the Earth's orbit around, around the sun, which governs the seasons, does not coincide with the set number of lunar cycles. Instead, the moon tends to undergo between 12 and 13 cycles in any given solar year. Can I just chuck something else in? I have noticed that the seasons here um, have occurred about a month um, a month before they're meant to. We've still got fully green trees. The trees don't know whether to shed their leaves. Where I've, whereas I've got crops of food here, that, that last week I was getting loads of food and suddenly all my plants are dying. Um, so what I, well, the reason why I'm, I'll put that in there is that as much as the, recording these cycles and understanding these cycles in past societies, I would say it wouldn't always work. I'm not doubting their technology, but I'm also, I'm also saying that we get, we get weather forecasts now that they say, oh, there's going to be a um, there's going to be a southeasterly wind, and suddenly you get a northeasterly wind because they could totally screwed it up. That doesn't happen much, but it does happen. So what I'm trying to say is there must have been there must have been problems with their uh, with their raison d'être. There must be problems with their with their recording and to be able to tell us things. But then again, um, they're not infallible either. So. This, this, so going back to the reality, this means that any attempt to keep track of the seasons using the moon alone will gradually drift even further from um, where they believed it was initially. So basically, we looked at that. However, I'm sure they were able to adjust things like anything. They, 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 they weren't stupid. An observer needs to know when to add or subtract an extra month to make good the time. Of course they did. Or simply hit the reset button and start counting again. Well, that makes sense. The thing is, the thing is saying all of this, who actually had the bloody time to do this? Who actually sat there and said, I've actually got the time to do this? That leads me into another set of problems. It sounds complicated, but that, that leads me into another set of problems. The problems are where that leads me into is if you've got somebody dealing with all this, right, somebody must have fed them, somebody must have clothed them, somebody must have looked after them. And one of the things that I do see about the Neolithic period and the Mesolithic period, towards the end of the Neolithic period, we're getting people who are controlling society and who are in charge of society, people that, that are better than everybody else. Well, somebody, let's actually, let's actually look, look at this. What am I talking about? Okay, when we get into the Iron Age, we got somebody who was able to make iron out of stone. The original um, King Arthur sword out of the stone thing, the jig, right? So, so we've got that. In, in the Bronze Age, somebody was able to smelt um, uh, copper and tin to make bronze. That person must have been really, really special. Somebody was able to tell you when to plant your crops. Somebody was able to tell you what's going to happen. Somebody was able to give you an idea of the seasons would have been somebody that could have kept your family alive. So that would have been good enough for the group to actually support somebody. Once a group had acquired this knowledge, it is relatively simple to construct a monument with a built-in reset switch for somebody who knew what they do it. But that's presuming that there was a small group of people. Um, actually, do you know what I've done? I've actually, I've actually fallen into... I've actually fallen into a little trap there, which, which I've devised for myself, and I've fallen right into it. I'm presuming that that the technology for this was actually in the hands of one person. What's to say the whole whole group was involved? Do you see what I'm trying to say? So uh, we we can we can possibly we in other words what i'm saying i'm using a modern bias i'm saying in the iron age there was a special person who went to a village who kept his skills 
But why do you need to keep your skills to yourself? So, Drina, how has this sounded so far? It sounds very interesting, but I've got a lot of questions. Do, actually, do you want to... after? No, I, I, want, I want you to throw them in now. And the reason why you want you to throw them in now, because I'm, I'm sure some of the others will have the same questions. So uh, give me those questions. Right. Well, first of all, I don't understand how they've decided it's a calendar. They must have had some way of... Is it, is it marking when the moon goes up and goes down? Yes. Which puzzles me because sometimes the moon's in front of my house and sometimes it's behind my house. Oh, bloody hell. Let's just not go there. Um, <laughs> it's have, oh, have, yeah. yeah. have, have a marker. And somebody standing on the other side to mark where it goes down and up. So that's three people, yeah. isn't it? I don't, uh, think that, it I don't think it's marking that. I think it's marking the phases of the moon. Right. Oh, right. Okay. So, but even so, it still makes sense. No yeah, you've still got to be able to see them, though. So. Yeah. Yes, of course you do. Yeah. No. Go, go, go. No, I, go. Yeah, yeah no, it, it's just I couldn't work it out. How is it a calendar? It makes no sense. And then it, if it, they're doing it, it's got to be a static group of people, hasn't it? Yeah. Because otherwise it, there's no point to it if you're just going to do it and walk away. Vis-a-vis, uh, uh, -vis, that's the point. We, we, we can yeah. take that. If you've got a post, if you've got a post in the ground, somebody might take that post away. But yeah. hang on, if you, if you, it has to be a group of people and therefore that means... If it's a group of people, then those people are living within the landscape and they're certainly not hunter-gatherers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So that, 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 that's kicked yourself right in the teeth. Yeah. Well, not you, but, but, but the idea yeah. that this uh, hunter-gatherer society... Is the, land, is the land flat? I mean, it's going to come up in different places if it's mountainous land. Uh, it? It, 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 it is. You've got the Cairngorms in the distance and yeah. you... you you, you've actually got um, a, a sense of flatness, but there are humps and bumps everywhere. Yeah. And uh, I got—I got to tell you this, right? I, I live on the top of a hill, and some nights I never see the moon. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do then? Yeah, but they do. The point is, they do do it. That's the point. Yeah. They—they they do do it. Um, that 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 is the thing. They they are doing it. They what? Well, okay. What 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 we've got here is is you and I discussing this. Me as an archaeologist, you you as one of my uh, wonderful students of of <laughs> learned qualities, and and I'm saying this, you're saying that. Why can't we all? Why can't we all sit down and say we're all involved in this? And that would make more sense. Yeah. yeah. Because because what one of the things right if you've got a small group a small community why can't you all be involved in it daddy you know we're going to do this maybe we're going to do this grandmother we're going, we're going to do this is what we do right mm. uh and actually actually the other thing as well is i'm going to say it this is going to upset andy right but um you don't really need to do this all year round you might only no, need to do don't. this at certain times of the exactly. year. exactly yeah 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 and by marking it you can you can you can then work out the other ones yeah so, yeah, exactly. So yeah. what we, we've obsessed for a while thinking this is an operational thing that's happening all year round, but it, but it could be something that, that is quite yeah. sort of... Oh, yeah, um, and the other, the other thing I was going to say... or unstatic or whatever. Yeah, go on. Sorry, there's no light no pollution, pollution, is there? No. So the stars are much more obvious. You yeah. look at... Very much part of their world. Yeah. And, and, and actually, it's more, it's more part of their world. You know, I... I um, I, I had a I had a telescope when I was a child and I just really tried. I, I really tried. It was cold. I lived in the attic. Um and there was only a certain angle I could put the telescope. It was very cold and I just I just really gave up on astronomy because I just because I probably lived in a town and, and I really didn't see things. Hmm. But but then again that that yeah, I, I um one thing about astronomy is that I I I I used to have a friend years ago. Who used to be in, in an a, um, astronomy group. They used to all stand in a field and they used to look up with their telescopes. They used to do it as a group. I could never understand that because I thought it was like. Um, but then I then I probably realised now that um, doing those types of things in a group is a communal thing. Mm. Yeah, and, and, you, and the other, the, and you sorry, see more. And, and you see more. The, yeah. yeah, you see more because there's people with different skills. The other thing as well is. There's one thing that none of us have actually realized, 
this is something you could do at night. Mm. Uh, and and uh, now I'm talking to you, I, I'm talking to you um, in, in West Wales, in, in the middle of a field, right? I can't, I can't do any work now. When I, when I was actually, when I was actually banging some boards down earlier on at six o'clock, I, I was struggling to be able to see. And I thought, my God, my God, you know, winter's coming uh, and uh, it has come. But you, 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 you can see, actually, why do we, why do we actually be a bit more friendly towards this? That the, the moon is a friend, the stars are friends. Uh, uh, that you right it, it, you don't have these friends when the light's gone right you've still got these things in the air okay and when there's clouds you haven't but you can just see something uh and and i i believe we've lost our uh, that our connection with with the stars and the moon most people have because at night when when you you've got electricity you go inside your house you keep yourself warm that's it how many of us actually OK, then how many of us go out and actually look at the uh, go out and have a look at the moon or, or the stars and so on? Very few of us. I do. Uh, I do. I do. <laughs> oh, regularly. Got- All right, then. You, you guys are special. But- <laughs> it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. But they would have had no concept of being a planet. It would have been very much part of yeah. their world. It would have been like yeah. their, their roof, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, okay. uh, don't drop the planet bit there, right? Mm-hmm. I completely agree with everything else you just said because this is this. Do you know what? Not, we're not going to have a break because I'm enjoying this. If I have a break, we're not going to get back on it, right? So, unless anyone wants a break, does anyone want a break? No, oh, I'm fine. Oh, you're all right. Oh, thank, thanks. I'm glad you approve. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. Don't, I don't, don't put the me. on in a minute, but just carry on. I can listen from the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, fine. Uh, yeah, just just go away then. Right. So, so, so one of the one of the things about this, one of the things about this, is, have you have you done all your questions, Drina? Yes, thank you. Right. So, I, actually, I didn't think this was going to be as interesting as it is, but it, but the thing is, everything that the Mesolithic world touches, it, it seems to be interesting. I don't know why, but, but because we're going we're going to we're going into detail, and now we're finding out that this is a much bigger subject than I thought it could be. Mm-hmm. So Vince, Vince Daphne and his team believe that they found possible evidence. Uh, th- th- this is what they believe. And the 12 pits set into, um, in a gently curving, um, right, that again. The feature consists of 12 pits set in a gently curving arc on sloping ground in the, um, in the valley of the River D. Uh, the alignment created by pits is around 50 meters long, so it's not a huge monument. However, it, it's slight. It's a slight arc there, but but then again, then again, one thing that this I don't know if any of you, you have heard me say this, but a straight line is a curve, or a straight line could be an S shape. A straight line can be anything. In fact, the movement of something can be any l- alignment that you want. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, this is this is the belief of Tim Ingold that that we've the the concept of a straight line is a modern concept. Uh, the line as a direction, as 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 a, a transaction, can be any anything that you want. It's, the, the, the straight line is is a modern concept. So the other thing as well is they do believe that the they do believe that maybe this itself. Um, was was something that didn't occur on a Wednesday afternoon. They believe that this could have. Let, let's listen to this. Let, this this is. Let's just blow our minds with this statement. Evolving over several centuries, the pit. Listen, evolving over several centuries. We'll read that again. Evolving over several centuries. The reason why I'm repeating that three times is that. This is something that just wasn't something that that was done in a, in the course of a year. This was something that was developed over a long period of time from all the evidence that we've got. I need I need to keep that thought there a minute. The pit alignment achieved its full, full, fully developed form approximately nine thousand eight hundred years ago. 
So it originally started about 10,000 years ago, predating um, most of what we do understand from the Neolithic period, which, which comes a lot after. This proof that Britain's earliest people were constructing permanent monuments would be remarkable in itself. And I think it is remarkable. Can we just can we just go back with a point that Drina said earlier on? How the hell do we know it's to do with the moon? Well, it could have started off as something else. Because one thing that you are aware of, which I'm aware of, which is one thing I'll be telling you guys, is that what we do see the past as is something that is evolving. Look at Stonehenge vis-a-vis, -vis, let's rest my case. Mm. Now, it, it's the next the next statement here is 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 a rather interesting um, little statement. Right. And what, what what I might do is actually I might actually go away from these images now. I might I'm actually just dive into Google. Um, and just see if there's anything else out there that we could just sort of put there, because the next statement here is 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 again equally very relevant. So, if we if we go with that and we go there and we do that, um, oh, and we and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in. I, I can see what well, see if we could get anything else on here. There we go. So we get some other images. Just scroll through some images. Let's see if we get anything else. Um, right. Okay. I I, I, li I like I like the looks of um, this here. What they what they're doing is showing this landscape as uh, as a series of pits. So if we go with Carl, is there were I'm guessing you keep referring to those pits that there was no evidence of anything being in the pits, like a post hole. Yeah, or I was going to ask that. Yeah, I, I, I got to I got to go that there was. There was, yeah, it would make more sense. But, yeah. but then again, maybe not. What we're going to do was that there was because, mm. uh, right? If if you are, if you want to look at this, if you want to look at this another way, uh, um. It's, it's, it's quite it's quite a simple simple thing to look at this. Mm. If, if you're if you're going to dig pits, which is a lot of work, um, and you weren't going to put anything in it, you may as well just left the surface and just piled up a load of earth. Yeah, you could just you could have yeah. just had. It would fill up pretty quickly as well over those two hundred years, wouldn't it? So. Yes. so, so yeah, exactly. It's a, in course. fact, it, it would it, it wouldn't take long to fill it up at all. So 50 meters, despite this modest scale, mm. mon monuments sufficiently substantial to scar the earth are typically seen as the handiwork of people. Now, this, this is going to be difficult for me to say, but I'm going to say it. Remember, this is 10,000 years ago. Let's just read that. Uh, this evidence has survived 10,000 years, seen as the handiwork of settled farmers rather than roaming bands of hunter-gatherers compelled to keep moving as natural resources were exhausted. So therefore, they were here, they were settled, and they were mm. able to use and consume and act and have a relationship with the surrounding landscape. As Warren Field, this prejudice appeared to be borne out by faces of... of uh, 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 this is... Um, there's, some, there's something else that, um, that that is something that we, we did piddle about with a few images there. They 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 actually found uh, something else, which is actually there. Ooh. Do you want to do that again, Andy? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what lovely scaffolding. No. Um. <laughs> Uh, you actually said that in one of those great poets from the 1980s. What lovely scaffolding. Yeah. So, so here we go. At Warren Field, wow. we actually find a, a Neolithic, like, let's just try um, we, it. They, they, they basically say, right, um, they find evidence of a gigantic Neolithic hall, right, mm. lying immediately adjacent to the pits. There's no reason why this couldn't have started off in the Mesolithic period. Mm. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Let's just stop a minute. What? Hang on. Hang on. Stop. So we've we've got these pits that are 
that are 10,000 years old and stuff is going on here in the Neolithic period and tell me that it's not related because it must be. Yeah. And that, uh, just, they just built yeah. that as they were passing by. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They, they did, just did it on a, did a bit each, did, each year. <laughs> yeah, each year. What they did, they did this each year, right? And when they're passing by. So that's a big building. <laughs> by the scaffolding that is a very big building so yeah. so even though we're not doing this neolithic hall we could we can think that there's there's an association with this mm. because what 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 we what we do do when we look at the when we look at landscapes such as stanton drew which is also in the south right there's loads of stone circles there and we basically say this was developed over a long period of time when we look at uh, we, what we what we always do, we always put things within the Neolithic and the Bronze Age, right? And uh, we 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 don't really expand. But what we what we like to do, we like to say, right, Neolithic Hall, we'll leave it, and that's it. And but unf unfortunately, the landscape is far far more complicated than. In other words, people just didn't turn up on a landscape. The door had been cleared of trees and just leave it, and then just leave it, and yeah. then, and whatever. It, it, it's a landscape that's active. It is is a, a, a um, not respective, a responsive landscape to the responsive to the needs of society, which which whatever levels of society that that is. And can I just make a statement, which is a very odd statement to make, but I um, there there are um, there are massive monuments that were constructed in the Second World War uh, by Albert Speer. And some of those monuments no longer exist. They've been completely removed. And there's no, no sign that those monuments were ever there, right? However, these monuments, this is the point, these monuments are, are, are still detectable after you know, thousands and thousands of years. Vis-a-vis, -vis, the point is, is that things like this can survive, but certain things from the Second World War don't. I know, they, I know lots of these things were deliberately removed. But the, the point is... The other point as well is, is if we think about the trenches of the First World War, you could go to some fields in France and not realise that thousands of people died in that field and there were loads of trenches and it's completely flat as a pancake. Now, the point is, it, is that even over time, that field would have become flat as a pancake and there would be no signs of anything ever happening there. But vis-a-vis, -vis, if you scrape the surface, you can actually find this archaeological evidence. So what, what we, um, so the, ev the evidence that we got, we, we can clearly see if we, if we think about the pits again. Um, and we, you know, I, I'd love to do this Neolithic build. I really would. Maybe, maybe just remind me when we're doing the Neolithic stuff to come back to it, Andy, just please. But, but what, what, what we do find is that, again, I'm a bit disappointed that we that we don't have anything much more substantial in our, in our Google stuff there. I don't know how that's relating, but it, oh, it's almost know. oh yes. Well, but ba basically, you can actually see the black pits, but okay, yeah, that's not really working without posts. Mm. Sorry, they're all oh, just... are they all different sizes. They're all different shapes and sizes. Yes, they are. If we if we want to, so there would uh, be if... uniform posts. That... No. There's, no, there's no. no need for it to be uniformed. No. We're, 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 uniformity is a modern concept. Why, we, you know, um, we, we're thinking about Europe and we're thinking about loaves of bread there, aren't we? So uh, <laughs> if we, we are, we are. And um, a Mesolithic no. post holes generally all the same shape and size, or are they all? No, they're random? irregular. They're a bit random. They're, they're too. irregular. They're a bit random, are they? Yeah. Look at that video there. Is this proof hunter gatherers invented? They're not hunter gatherers. Why do we keep keep calling yeah. it hunter gatherers? Yeah. You know. So so it it's you know we're we're, we're thinking uh, and we're thinking this is where we're, we're plunking this in Scotland, so far away from everything else. So Vince Gaffney's team have demonstrated how the combination of this pit configuration and their landscape setting could have accurately tracked the seasons, creating what is essentially a primitive calendar that the team have dubbed a time reckoner. Uh, if they are correct, it is the earliest such known device. But, you know, I, I, think, I think in many ways, in many ways, we, we, we're not really going outside the box when we're really understanding um, 
the, the great levels of of archaeology um, and everything out there in the world, because it, 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 this this world is so much more complicated than than uh, than we give it credit for. So if we go back to this again, we could add a it, few. Sorry, well, I was going to say we could add a few things in here though. Go for it, please do. Um, first of all, like the uh, the lunar calendar is twenty eight days, right? And it's actually very accurate and it's yes. easily observable. So therefore it is a very easy way of calculating time and a timetable and a calendar mm. for whatever reason you want to do it. It also coincidentally happens to be the same period of the fertility cycle of the female. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and you get all yeah. that fertility dolls and all the rest of that go with it was clearly was important. Yeah. But also that can only have been built if they already knew that. Right. So and that oh, then, yeah. therefore en enables them to stay on that site mm. and and grow crops and get whatever gain when it comes past, because they know it's already going to happen. So the knowledge is already there before they built it. It's a record to show the seasons and migrating yeah. habits of animals, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything, anything you want. Yeah, it's yeah. really accurate. And then I just <laughs> keep it permanent mm. rather than just with a stick in the sand or the soil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I, can I just ask, why are you saying they're not hunter-gatherers? Because they could be, couldn't they? Right, okay, okay, right. Um, I, want, I want to grab two <laughs> concepts there, right? And... and, and mm. And, and and the the the, the first concept I, I want to get is is that uh, um, could 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 because what what we've done we've we've established now in the Mesolithic period there were people the hunters gatherers and people who run a sedentary lifestyle people who were who were set in one location right we know that so there could have been oh. a mixture of these two types of people. There really could have. They, they, these, these could have been um, two, they, they could have been hunter gatherers and sedentary people. There could have been lots going on within the landscape, right? And, and I, I, I don't think we can dismiss, I, I don't think we can dismiss either. Um, and, you know, there was an interesting point that Andy made in, in, just then. And I just, I nearly missed it. It nearly went out of my head. And the point said, the, 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 the thing that Andy said, he said, uh, they already knew all this, right? And, and I think if if I, if I think you know what Andy said, and Andy's right, when you look at Stonehenge, for example, when when, when you look at Stonehenge, you 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 think of Stonehenge and you think, ah, uh, Stonehenge was something that developed over a long period of time, and there's no way that they um, that there's that there's there's no way that they um, there's no way that they just suddenly did this. They 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 must have been practicing and 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 developing this over a long period of time. Is that what you meant, Andy? Yeah. Are you there, Andy? Def yeah. Yep, definitely. I mean, you think tell, about tell, it. Tell, tell the, us the, what you mean. Yeah. You think about you know you're sitting outside your cave. Oh look, there's a yeah. full moon. Wasn't the one a few days ago? You know, right? Yeah. You know, like like last. You know. And they, you know, only take. You know, they're intelligent people. You know, they're probably just as intelligent, if not more, than we were. Somebody would have thought, "I'm going to mark. I'm going to find some way of marking this down and working out what's going on here." And then yeah. he'll, then they'll notice that oh, other things happen at this time. If I know that, I can work out when this is going to happen and when this is going to happen and when we should plant that crop and when the deer are going to come and when that and, and when we should have babies. You know, all that. You know, will all come from that. Yeah, you know, there are other ways they could work that one out as well, of course, but. <laughs> I imagine they'd have a fairly permanent oh. camp and people they would just send people off on a foraging yeah. or hunting party. Oh. People would yeah. go off for yeah. a day or two and then come back with whatever they found. Well, well we've we've had, if you look at even our recent history, there's there's you know, in Western Europe we were all pretty settled. And yeah. then you, you get the Hun coming in who are nomadic, you know. I mean, why would you so. trace along with women and children? Oh God! Yeah, the whole and then group. Do this. You, you just wouldn't do it, would you? Hey, there's a concept. The women and the what? children built this. Well, the men were well, out, yeah. leaving them behind so because I, they didn't want was, it. peace and quiet. Yeah. Stop it, Andy. <laughs> so I was going to say the women all camp, 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 You'd need hunters, gatherers, 
childminders, cooks, yeah. fire yeah. makers, wood collectors, yeah. somebody to keep the area clean, yeah. uh, somebody who makes tools, somebody who invents things, maybe an astronomer, somebody doing the lookout. Everybody yeah. would have a job yeah. and they, they would change it round maybe every week. Like when I'm a celebrity, <laughs> and <laughs> out of here, they vote a different leader every week or something. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Well, they'd have been they'd have had to be fairly democratic, I would have thought, to work as a group, wouldn't they? Yes. Yeah. No, the women would do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking maybe they built this. Yeah. Well, I was going to say they did it to mark when their periods are. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> why <What>? not? <laughs> Same cycle, exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Did I just hear what you just said? <laughs> Why not? There, there oh, are I plenty don't. of plenty of tribes that exclude women when they're menstruating, aren't there? They so, do. They'll so. do too. Yeah. Yeah. They'll do. Yeah. So the women just built this be because they wanted to know what period they were on. Yeah. 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 When you do. Yeah. It's a perfectly sound theory. Awesome. Thank you. The thing is, why why would they need? Why would they? Why would they need to know that they were in the uh, Mesolithic period? In the Mesolithic period? Same, same reason they need to know it now. Yeah. Exactly the same reason. Nobody ever talks about that, do they? No, nope, they do don't. Do? No. I'm sure Claire would. <laughs> <laughs> she probably would, yeah. You mean your Claire as opposed to our Claire, yeah. No, your uh, no, oh, our Claire. Claire. Not yeah, my Claire. I, yeah. Oh, no, not that Claire. Oh, yeah. flipping heck. Yeah, she would too. <laughs> she she would too. Have, have you, can yeah. you imagine the two Claires together? Oh, that'd be frightening. <laughs> oh. Claire squared. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, it 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 just it, I I don't think it would work. They would value uh, the women actually. <laughs> it would work either very well or not at all. You're right. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we've gone off on tangents, right? Okay, we've just gone way off somewhere yeah. else. 28 days is the key, though, is the cycles of everything. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's answer some of the questions. Uh, right, okay. Right, yeah, so, so we've... Um, joining the dots. It was, it, was, it was not just the date of the pit group that caught the team's eye, or the dates of the pit group. The, the the those those the, the twelve you know because obviously there's other pits so you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve but there's other pits indicated there's a thirteen there's twenty one and all the rest of it these little ones but the main the big ones the bigger ones the identifiable ones the thing is when you're thinking about this if the the landscape's been leveled since then then the rise and fall of the land may have discluded some of the pits. Um, because and, and we may have lost, but then again, let's just keep going. Let's just focus on the 12 pits because we're going to get really over it, over it a minute. As the 12 pits were carefully cut, so the smallest two lie at either end of the alignment. From there, the holes become larger until they reach pit five. So you've got pit five there. There you go. Uh, at the center of the group. So it's calling them a group. This cavity stands out by virtue of its size, so it's a large pit. A massive, two miles across, <laughs> I'm joking, a massive <laughs> two, <laughs> a massive two metres across, so that's pretty, um, that's pretty wide, right? Yeah. But you want the depth? 1.5 metres deep. Right, wow. So, Trina, how, how, how tall are you? About five foot. Something. Well, you, you 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 wouldn't be able to get out. We're just going to chuck you in there. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and by, it's not my fault. You're small. Um, <laughs> by having a, a conspicuously misaligned neighbour, pit six. There you go. Pit six is out. Six, six. That's that's slightly misaligned. Six, uh, which breaks the gentle cur curving are observed by the other holes. So in other words, you've got you've got a nice curve, and then six just buggers off somewhere else. But then again, if you look at 21 anyway, so six seems to I'll be on another tangent. So pit five and six are also the only two in the sequence that preserved traces. 
you know, you know, I said I, I warned you earlier on to not even um, dismiss posts. Show him posts once stood within them. Yes, and there are posts in them. So when we saw the reconstructions, they weren't exactly what we should have been looking at. No. So these these actually show giant signs that are posts in them. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. If you've got a if you've got a post, if right, start again. If you've got a pit that's two meters across, you might be able to have a substantial post in there. Correct. And being that some of the some of the ground surfaces as as um, as degraded, you could have been originally talking about these being two meters deep. So therefore, if you had a chunk a chunk in there, you could actually have it standing quite high. Yeah. And that that and actually, Andy, have you seen? Are, are you going to hear what I'm just about to hear? Maybe this could have been used uh for for the sun as well yeah well absolutely it could also have been that the one in the oh. middle was the highest one and it went lower as it went to the ends which is why yeah. they're smaller so you had an arc so that would aesthetically would look lovely <laughs> but, but it also you, you know if the sun's coming out or the moon is coming over the top of that hill at certain times that would then pick up those and not pick them up as well wouldn't it so but there, there is one other point as well is we're we're all you know there's we all this stuff today we've gone off on a tangent right and the reason reason why I gonna I gonna I gonna bring us into something else um, what this I just gonna chuck this in there right what if this is an expression of art yeah love it yeah. that in there yeah. sorry guys yeah. I have to do go on, that's go what on, I meant with the aesthetics of it yeah, yeah. oh come yeah, on Andy. It... You, you don't get that one. I do. Go on, Gina. <laughs> if the larger circle is the size of the pit and the inner bit is the post, doesn't yeah. that... Um, if the post wouldn't be supported very well, would it? Would they pack it down with something? Uh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. This, this, is, this is my bit. This is my field, right? I'm not necessarily indicating that it's a really tall, tall post, right? Yeah, but uh, it's a big... Um, it, it might have actually been a really wide post, but they might have thought, right, you know, you know um, what we're going to do? We're going to go, you and Drina, we're going to go on a bit of a journey right now. You, you're, you're my little Padawan learner, right? We're going to, we're going it, to, it, it's, it's the year 1000, right? And we're wandering around the parishes in, in Britain, right? With, with a piece of the Holy Cross, right? Okay. Now, the piece of our Holy Cross is in a pannier on the side of the donkey. It's only a little square thingamajig, right? And on the other pannier, that's where our food is and a little bit of alcohol, but we don't tell anyone that, right? <laughs> so when we go, when we go, when we go into the villages and there, there's a there's a little stone there, right? And there's a little socket in it. You go and get the bit of the Holy Cross, you put it in the socket, and we're preaching from the Holy Cross. But it's not a cross, and secondly, it's just a tiny bit of wood. And it is exactly the same principle you could be saying here. It doesn't need to be a tall standing piece of a trunk. It could, it could actually be quite a small thing. So there we go. Well, if it, if you're going to put the trunk in, it's going to be a huge tree for some of them, isn't it? Six foot and, and, Yeah, and also, yeah. That's the smart. other thing as well is, the other thing as well is, I'm going to say it, a piece of wood that wide, and if you use the right wood, could have survived, could have survived decades, if not 100 plus years. If, if, you, if you if you treat the piece if you treat the timber properly, it could last quite a while. Wood henge. You know, yes. Exactly. And that, this is the thing. When we look at wood henge, we immediately presume that the timbers at wood henge rotted away within a week, and and that was it. They, those timbers could have been there for for decades, if not hundreds of years. But there was that one off the Norfolk coast, wasn't it? That they uh, they excavated, which still had the the root the tree, the inverted tree root in it. Mm. Exactly, and swampy yeah. was there as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Andy, you just said you've just done the sea edge thing. Yeah, right. Sea edge. Mm. Uh, Ma Margaret, you're still Thank there. You. You yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Margaret. Over. That was the one I meant. Yeah. Norfolk, Margaret. I thought you'd gone home. No, no. I, I don't even know if Anne's there anymore. I think she's disappeared. <laughs> but anyway, could have been a hoo ha stand for all we know, couldn't it? You could do whatever you like with a hoo ha stand. I'm carrying on. Hoopla, hoopla, uh, again. Right, right. The the thing is, right. We we have evidence in five and six of the timbers, right. We're struggling to find much else of any other evidence in the other 
in the other pits. But it doesn't mean to say that they... The thing is, if these pits were cleaned out on a regular basis, and the trees... They could have moved the tree stumps around. Oh, don't they talk about moving things around at Stonehenge, like massive bits of frigging stone? I'll tell you what, we'll chuck, we'll chuck a stone in one of the, uh, was it, 56 Aubrey holes around the outside, and what we'll do, we'll, we'll move that big stone over there, right? Oh, and then we'll lift out this big bloody stone and chuck it over there. Well, if they're able to do it with stones, we can do it with our timbers. Anyway, most of the Aubrey holes, well, not most of them, some of the Aubrey holes, there's no, there's no evidence that there were ever stones in them in the first place. But what I'm trying to say... Well, like, what? The I, pit fill with water. Why not? Because, why not? If you line it with clay, you, you would yeah. see... You, you, oh, my... Andy, you see what she's just done now? Yeah, that's a really interesting concept, <laughs> isn't it? If you, yeah. line, if you line it with clay, right, you can see the reflection of the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. You drop the wood as well, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're just, yeah, it's there. And yeah, or, or we could have the wood floating in the, in the hole. <laughs> wood holes in the ground shift over 8,000 years. Oh, by the way, position. there's a hole in the ground. They're going to move on the, over towards the left. No. <laughs> they, they no. Stay, no, they stay in the same position. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, 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 don't, they don't move around. By, by the way, we're, going, we're, we're just going to go down the road a little bit. We're well, unless it's on a hillside, they can migrate a bit then. But you yeah. Know. yeah, Shut up, Andy. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Thanks. You're not supposed to agree with that. Right. So, okay. Uh, instead, right, here we go. This is it. Um, now the, the point this next point is well we're going to do the next point but one thing one thing we, we one thing I am going to say right is everything that we've discussed could be what's happening yeah because this is over two hundred years and because it's over two hundred years we don't really know if 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 the purpose of this was the same as when they set out to do it right yeah mm. um, so I'll I'll give you. Um, you know, it, it, it's like oh, what we did. We, we started online classes talking about, um, um, you know, our original classes. We started talking about art history. And then we decided to talk about the Kama Sutra. Um, and then our classes turned out to be talking about sort of general physics. And now we're doing archaeology. So in, in other words, uh, you might not see there's a link between any of them, but they're the same. The link is that they're all using pits. Uh, as, as what we said, right? We're all using the internet, we're right as a vehicle to teach, but there's different topics at each of the times that we're teaching, right? But if we want to look at that as a metaphor for these pits, the pits may have had a different purpose and a different um, acumen over that length of time. What we can't be obsessed that it was that it, that it was the same thing that all these things were being used for. They may have all had posted at one point, but they decided to chuck them all out. What I don't those, know. What are those numbers two, three, and four? What are those? Are those just um, they they represent other holes um that um would have had timbers in, we believe. Oh. This is the thing. And they look like they they've been put in secondary. It's almost as if uh yeah. we're gonna we're gonna stuck it, we're gonna put three three garden heads in Dreamer's garden for for a certain reason. I thought like cremation pits as well. Yeah. Now this this is interesting. Inst now, Andy, would you understand that? Uh, instead, is some of them uh, their fill contained large quantities of burnt material and most intriguingly stones that had been brought to the site from some distance away. It is a clear sign that special material was being deliberately placed in the pit. But 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 we're going to say a but there. That may not have been the original reason why the pits were dug. Because the nope. stuff being put in the pits was after the pits were being used. <sighs> Allegedly. So Shut up. Complicated. <laughs> it's not complicated. It's easy. Do the do we know that the um all the pits were in dug at the same time? How do I we know, know they, they were, they were no, um, no? Oh god, we're not going there, and oh, we don't know. Yeah. Okay, right. Because there's been contaminants, right? Yeah. Right, here, here we go. This sounds like a pop group. Many moons ago, or the many moons. While the 12 pits... Now, the thing is... Now, the, right, the biggest problem is... 
you could see while the 12 pits could be taken to represent 12 months of the year, but there's other pits indicated. Mm. And there is something else that the, the, the painter, the, the fainter one shown on you may have actually fallen out of use. So anyone attempting to use the monument as a forward planner still faced the problem of inconsistencies between lunar months and the solar year. But who, these people ain't bloody stupid. They knew what they were doing. This cannot be corrected by a group of pits and posts alone. But the archaeologist noticed that Warren Field's position within the landscape provided a natural reset mechanism. <laughs> right. OK. Um, sorry, my language has gone down. Uh, so so again, back to this. Right. What we're going to do, we're going to. Um, why why do they insist on it being connected with a solar cycle as well? Why do they? Why could they not just be running a, a lunar cycle and not be interested in the year as a solar cycle at all? It, oh shit, Mama French, yeah. Hang well, on a minute. Shut up, Trina. Hang on, <laughs> no, no, I got to do this a minute. I got to do this. Right, Drina, keep your thought there. Write it down. We'll do that in a minute. And Andy's got a really good point. The, the point is that Andy made is that we're we're representing their world in the modern calendar, right? Yeah. Their calendar may have been based on a on a different set of principles, right? So, say for example, um, well, we're told that we got um, autumn, winter, uh, spring, and summer, um, and they may have different times that they planted their crops. Because seasons have all changed, harvest and everything, all the times of the year have changed quite consistently over the past few years. Few years. When, when I was a child, right, when I was a child, they used to have um, an air show at RAF St. Athens. It was one of the best in Britain, right? It was brilliant. But then, year after year, when they had the air show, it, the, it was raining. So they decided to ditch it forever. We never had the air show again. It, it went forever, right? Because the seasons had changed. So they didn't have the air show again. And you could think of this as a metaphor for whatever reason they set out this this as something changed. They may have used it for something else. They may have cut down more trees. The landscape may have changed. People's mm. connected us with the landscape may have changed. All these different things may have changed. But Andy's point is, is that the 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 idea of the, the raison d'etre, the, the idea that this was actually used just to record um, a year may not actually be true. So Andy's point that this may have actually they may, you know, their lives were, their lives were a little bit shorter than ours. However, their lives would have been more fulfilled than ours. Right. Let's just talk about that little thing. And Gina will bring you your in. Sorry. So say, for example, uh, our lives are really complicated these days. Right. Uh, and sometimes we're able to sit there and do nothing. These people were never able to sit back and do nothing. Their lives were so full and fulfilled. Um, so their their connectedness with the with the I'm gonna avoid saying the word seasons, their their connectedness with this with the um solar calendar was much deeper than we could ever think. So look, look, all right, Gina, your bit, and we'll we'll crack on with I just want to say, I would just want to go into a bit little bit more detail about this plan. Oh, well, I was going to ask where's pit one, because there isn't one. <laughs> so, the missing link. <laughs> oh, no. Go on. Where did they start, then? And you, and you wonder whether you, they're all there. Oh, because... my God, she speaks! Yeah. I thought you'd gone. <laughs> Go on. I thought you'd wonder if they're all living, because I mean, we've got up to 22. Now, you only need another six, and you've got your 28 days of the month. Yeah. Mm, you know, yeah, like, good point. And I wonder if perhaps some of the little ones at the end are just not represented there. Yeah. It's a very strange way of numbering, isn't it? So are they saying that section in the middle with the arrow pointing up to the sun yeah. are those five that is May, June, July, August, September? Yeah. The ones on the left are the winter <laughs> months and the <laughs> other three are the autumn <laughs> months. Is that what they're illustrating? Yeah, I agree. Right, let's crack on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have right, got okay. a sun on it. It's, it's well, I'm, I'm assuming they're saying those are the summer months. It's a lunar calendar. It's not a solar calendar. Why is there a sun there? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Somebody's got the wrong picture. 
<laughs> don't, don't mean you, Carl. When they've made it, they've put the sun on instead of the moon. The sun on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just realised. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's the marker for the middle of the year. The, 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 the penny just be. dropped. Yeah. Well. Um, what Ooh. I just realised there's something else that's worked out that we all deal with every, all every year, and it's quite an important one that's done on the lunar calendar, and that's Easter. Aye. Mm. Well, mm. they didn't have bloody Easter eggs, you stupid man. Oh, oh they've always it, had Easter eggs. Yeah, they had to, they had to come first. No, we had not <laughs> risen back in those Which days. one came it's, first? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Lord oh, has not risen. Right, just just shut up about the bloody sun. There, eh? we're gonna move it. Right, it's yeah. gone. Good, it's gone dark. <laughs> God, right, okay. Oh, right, okay. A little bit of description to this this image, anyway. The um, right. So basically, now this might complicate it a little bit. Uh, that not the green things are not necessarily showing where there were tree stumps. Obviously, five and six are. Um, the right, the image shows the pits as excavated, with green indicating where they were later recut. So, th this evidence seven, six, five, twenty. Oh no, sixteen, eighteen. That means that they probably went a bit deeper and they were they were recut for whatever reason. Um, Above that, you can see the symbolic arrangements of the pits in relation. I, 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 I'm not going to say, oh, I wish I'd even started. This is for the lecture now because I don't know what this means. Right, it, this, this, that's, this, right okay. It, somebody tell me what this means because I have no idea. No. I wish I'd even started this one. Here we go. Above that, you can see the symbolic arrangements of the pits in relation to the slug road pass as rendered on Google Earth. What the hell's that? Mm -hmm. Now, now I've gone out my depth. I don't know what that is. A slug road. The sun indicates the location of sunrise on the midwinter solstice in the year ten thousand and one years ago. Oh, what? <laughs> no. Stop it! While the image of the waxing and waning moon shows how the pits could be subdivided to show the same... Oh, forget it. I'm not going to do it anymore of that because I just has gone over my head. Right. <laughs> we, we, start, we started playing with the uh, modelling of the moon um, and re realised that um, this was sort of similar to um, the Slug Road Pass. I've no idea what that is. Maybe it's actually just a place name. What in Cardiff? <laughs> the slug walk, slug something. <laughs> slug roads. Oh, can slug we just road. move away from slugs? But is it oh. if it is it does it not say that it was um, a what's it? A Google Earth image. So it's maybe from the road itself, uh -huh. looking towards the mountains. Oh, oh the slug oh, road yeah. passes the location, it's the road. Oh. Yeah. That's what oh, I'm that's guessing. Ah oh, right. It still don't make any sense. That's a this isn't name. It's yeah, it is. They're yeah. all a bit slow on that street. <laughs> no, it's a road. There's a big difference that between road. a street They're and a road. A bit slow. Yeah. yeah. A bit sluggish. Yeah. Here we go. This is an important and conspicuous pass through the hills to the southeast of the site. Anyone watching from the Warren Field Monument? So it is a road, is it? A field yeah. Monument. It it. Um, 10,001 years ago would have seen the midwinter solstice sunrise occur in the prominent notch on the horizon created by the slug road pass. Oh, shit. Yeah. I wish I had done this bit now. The sun would have risen low down the eastern slope of the pass and then rolled up along its western slope before emerging from the gap by creating a fixed point where an annual annular solar event can be witnessed. It becomes possible to prevent a lunar calendar from being cast adrift of the seasons. Okay, so you can use it for both. Yeah. Yeah. That yes. Makes sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, hang on. You don't necessarily mean to say that this was all the same idea at the same time. Because yeah, I, I'm gonna agree, we're gonna agree with us all, right? But one thing I'm gonna say is is that uh 
I remember a few years ago, some some archaeologists were obsessed that uh, our ancestors at one point in their development just observed the moon and others observed the sun and others then observed both. Once a year, you effectively reset your clock by this observation of the rising sun at that specific time, which which is which is set uh, at win, mid winter solstice sunrise, which is approximately the twentieth or twenty first of every December every year. Then you could start counting off the lunar months until the next mid winter solstice when you start counting again. This means you are essentially kept on track for the entire year. It is not a complex thing. Once you have mastered the concept of lunar months that can be corrected on an annual basis, you essentially only have to track the months in order to make a functional calendar for that year. Uh, Andy, you know what I'm going to say in a minute? I'm going to, Andy's right. We can't prove it, but we feel that the slight misalignment of pit six could be explained by this being the point of observation towards the midwinter solstice. I'm going to say this, right? Actually, that's it. We, we've come to the end of the lecture. Right? I'm going to say, I'm going to say this, right? That um, why do they need to reset their calendar all the time? Because they don't. Because what we're doing, we're putting our modern parameters on their ability to need to reset. They don't necessarily need to reset anyway, do they? No. Or am I, or, no, they it, don't. It's two days out. I just checked. And that really wouldn't matter, would it? No, no. no it would And the, the, other, the other thing as well is, right, nobody said this throughout the whole lecture. We're going to say it. What if, what if it's one night? Uh, well, it, well what, what if, there's, what, what if there, you can't really see the moon? Yeah. You're buggered then, are you? Yeah. Well, you know, because <laughs> you've got your stones, you know where it is anyway. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. It's up there. Yeah. Good. <laughs> well, it's like I said. Sometimes it's behind my house. Sometimes yep. it's. Oh, well, well that, that's that's what. So when it, when I can't see it, it's behind your house. Is that right? Yeah. 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 The one. It's quite a big house. Well, yeah. <laughs> what, and what I did is... I did suggest the sun marked the middle of the year. Yeah. But that was wrong. It's the wrong middle. I was thinking of the summer sun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you can have the wrong middle, you can have the right middle if it's not the middle, because it's not going to be the middle, because they reset it, because it's out. Okay. On that note, folks, right, I'm going to call it a day, because my head's fried. <laughs> yeah, you'd lose a year over 150 years, wouldn't you, if it was two days out? Yes. But, the, but as we but, know, these people lived a long time. Yeah, and it wouldn't matter because you wouldn't know it anyway. It's still yeah. the same. It's still another measurement of time, isn't it? So yeah. But if you use the sun, that might be more accurate to start the year off again. Do you think? Yeah, I possibly. I, yeah. I decided I could use Ole instead. Right. So, no, so, so I just put that in there just, just to throw you off. Right. Okay, so um, any any questions on any of this today? No, oh, interesting. I, I think we've completely burnt ourselves out. Well, I've totally burnt myself <laughs> out. I, 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 I'm so far burnt that that, that I my my wings are, are being clipped. It's so, astonishing. Uh, it's astonishing to think that somebody just up near Aberdeen decided to build it. You know, it's not like why why was that place so important? You know. Well, or, or was it? Maybe it wasn't the place, but the group of people, because they were obviously <laughs> extremely bright, extremely capable to even begin mm. to think. I mean, I was looking at it, couldn't, couldn't. I mean, I'm really uh, felt foolish tonight. I struggled to understand how to read it. It took me a while to get there. Mm. And when you think those people that long ago could come up with that, I think that's just staggering. Yeah. Really staggering. But there's the aerial view. Seen that circle in the bottom left at the end of it? Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. It looks like there's possibly more going further on as well. Yeah, uh, yeah but, but we don't want to do that to confuse it. No, that, yeah. that, 
that would really blow it. No, no, that's 365. That's 28 days if there was a few more. Well, it could be, yeah, or well, 365, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know, so that, that's where the, I think that's where the Neolithic building is there, the, the one in front, the one yeah. on, you've got the big pit yeah. on the right there. That's really, that's, that building's amazing. I really, we must do that. Oh, well, we, we've got to do that. Yeah, that really is an interesting building. I tell you, you just see the size you... of the post holes at the end of it. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. 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 Oh, God. oh, all right, then let's just have one more look at it. We, we, you know, oh, where, where are we? Oh, there, there. Yeah. Like a longhouse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, re- I mean, you think that that, that scaffolding is probably, uh, the platform is probably 2.4 metres by 0.7 metres. So it yeah. gives you the idea that each segment of that house that looks like it's into se- separate slices is probably One, at three, least 2.4, maybe three metres wide. Yeah. And that, Six, that, eight. So the hole is probably at least two metres in diameter. So And it looks quite deep as well. That's had a very big post in it. Yeah. If that's what it is, I'm guessing it will be because you've got the two end posts and then you'd have a ridge pole going along the top in the middle, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it is very, very big. It's the same like as a Viking longhouse, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the thing is that that's within this landscape and it's obviously got some kind of association with the... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, with the Mesolithic world. Uh, do you think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's got to be more buildings, haven't there? They couldn't just have oh, one, yeah. big one. So, really interesting landscape. So, yeah, where, where were these people living, or were they, where, yeah. or, or were they living underneath this building? It's, it's all. Well, it's all you'd get a lot in there, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah. Oh, we we could teach our online classes in there. Yeah, I mean, look at it, the way it's partitioned off. You could have all sorts of things in there. We could yeah. have the library in the middle. Claire could just uh, go on the one end of the building. We'll just ignore she's there. Um, <laughs> bring the cows in to keep us warm. Absolutely. And, and, and my sheep. Yep. Yeah, they'd yeah. have the animals in there, wouldn't they? Yeah. But, mind you, we would, we would know Claire was there because of her laugh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, uh, right. Let, anyway, let's do the rounds, right? Oh God, let, let's let's just see each other now. For heck, God, we, we, we've been too. I, I I haven't seen anyone for for two hours. Right. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. What are we doing? Right. Yeah. Okay. Let let's get let. Who, who's out there? Right. Who's uh? Right. Okay. Are we still there? Yep. Yeah. Alan, anything yeah. you want to say, darling? You don't did, want to say anything now. Did you say Anne or Andy? I said Anne. Oh, Anne. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. No, I just, I, I found it really fascinating, particularly with all the, what can I say, you can understand the, the sort of uses and the ideas that came up, but also the changing over time, and it, it's all a big puzzle, really, in a way. I, th- I found it fascinating. On the other hand, I felt very ignorant. Me too. Not much to say. No, I don't know. We all are. I don't, think, don't I don't think that's really fair, though. That would be calling yourself ignorant because, uh, um, no, I don't think that's. Yeah, that's, I don't think that's, that's fair. Why I felt it. ignorant was because it took me quite a long time to understand how that was a calendar. Oh, me too. All these clever people you know, got this idea, and uh, it took me while I was looking at it. It took me a long time through the. Yeah, but that's, that's, to, to that's, catch on to it, I, I felt really, that's what I meant by ignorant. So that's, yeah. that's because we just don't do that. So, oh, no. uh, But that's because we don't do that, no. isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've seen a couple of things similar to that before and tried to work them out, so it was a little bit easier for me in that respect, but it's only because mm-hmm. of that. But if you were doing that every day, it would be a second nature yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, but I did find it absolutely fascinating. Mm. Yeah. But they would have That's... sat and looked at the heavens night after night all their lives, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, they'd they had know, no choice. They'd know. Yeah. Well, they, 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 no, I mean, tell me. all those um, people who painted the constellations and things 40,000 years ago. Yeah. So they were obviously very attentive to yeah. what was in yeah, the No light pollution, so it would, on a clear night, you'd mm. see the Milky Way, you'd see everything. Yeah, yeah amazing. Yeah. You're probably annoyed by it because it was really bright. Yeah. Oh, switch somebody, switch it <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go in the bloody cave then. 
Yeah. You thought about the, the person who worked all this out would have been the equivalent of the Mesolithic anorak. So, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. But, but, yeah, was it no, no his time or something? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, what a woman. Well, this oh, a woman, woman. woman absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We mean, aren't there, aren't we? Yeah. It's, a, it's a woman who come up with this, nobody else. I, I I have often wondered about that about this kind of you know they got those fertility symbols. Is that females were obviously really important. You don't get any very few male symbols, and I always wondered whether it was because they were perhaps more in touch with the earth, yeah, and and therefore they they knew more and they worked out and that would easily lead on to working out lunar cycles and things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, the American yeah. Indians they. Males very often go out and hunt, and the females do all the field work. Yes. So it will be more important to the women in that way too. Yes. If what happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, right. I was saying grandmothers would have been very important to a group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They're not menstruating anymore. That could. Yes. Uh, yeah do more jobs that we would have been really important wouldn't we do you think we would have lived that long uh, yeah. oh that's I a good point know. yeah unless they had children when they were very very young so about 50 yeah, yeah. possible but the the, the 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 thing the thing is that their that the, their lives so say for example somebody lived till they were 50 right their lives would have been a lot longer than ours, right? Yeah. And, and, and I mean that their quality of life would have been much more filled yeah. than our lives. Yeah. So, so say, for example, we, uh, okay, um, today, today I wasted um, an hour and 20 minutes driving. Well, they didn't need to waste an hour and 20 minutes driving, mm. right? So, so, you know, they they would have been in more touch they would have been more in touch with their seasons and and did different things with their time you know yeah. and uh, you know they, do you not think that's have, that's well, kind of relative though that you know they could have gone off in a hunt and chose to go in one direction and got it wrong and come back with nothing yeah, yeah. that would have been a waste of time but that's life isn't it yeah but no no what <laughs> andy no what i'm saying is that is that uh you know, we, we sit around in hospitals waiting for people. Like we didn't, they didn't yeah. have hospitals to sit around in. They they, yeah. oh, they, 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 they didn't watch endless bloody um, episodes as Drina does as a Coronation Street. Or, or but they, they Drina, did do uh, art, Drina, though, didn't they? They did do uh, art Drina. and carving and things in the, I'm oh, guessing, yeah. in the evenings or yeah. maybe on rainy days. And they had uh, musical instruments and they, yep. and they did yep. dancing and singing. Yep. And, yeah. And yes. Ceremonies. Together, so, yeah. yeah all that. I wonder if they did play acting to amuse one another. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Or, 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 or doctors and nurses. Yeah, I was going to say I made babies. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Got to impress them somehow, haven't they? They wouldn't have been prudish <laughs> back then, would they? Probably not. It would know. have been anything goes, I would imagine. Yeah. Or you. <laughs> right, let, 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 I can see this is going somewhere else. Right, Gina, anything else you want to say, love? <laughs> no. No, thank you. <laughs> right, I didn't even start this silly line of <laughs> debauchery. Come and look at me lunar calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that that's maybe why it was built. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah I, can, I, can, I can always I can always remember Claire. Will you come back to my place and see my socketed axe? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I got to be honest with you. That, that's the best chat of line I've ever come across. There is, of course, another possibility. If someone just like you said, to Art, just built it for the fun of it because he was bored and he was a bit of a loony, and and just thought that'll that'll screw him up in ten thousand years time. Yeah, yeah but there's one problem, Andy. Like right? generation after generation thought the same thing. Yeah, well, they're, well, they're, if he's called a loony, it must be to do with the moon, mustn't it? It is. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly where lunatic comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My dad always said, "Don't sleep with the moon shining on you." Shut the curtain. You know, like that. Wow. that's interesting. <laughs> you go mad if the the moon shines. Wow, I wonder how oh. far that goes back. Yeah, quite. Wow. Yeah. Bonkers. My mum reckoned that, that she had kids, she was a teacher, that she had in, in primary school, that there were several kids that would were affected by the lunar yeah. cycle of the moons. So. Yeah. Well, I know yes. my dog and other people's dogs that. come alive at night when they've oh, had they their evening meal. 
Yeah, they, we they, uh, Ozzy is just um, so active after mm. he's had his evening meal until about eight on. He's not tonight because he's at archaeology class. But <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally he'd be, he'd, be, he'd be running around and really active, and that's a throwback to being a wolf, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, you've, re you've really put yourself in a situation now. i got somebody who's watching there, right, who doesn't pay his subs, and now you just told me. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah exactly. he, goes, he goes to sleep. Don't he see knows it. when it's Tuesday night. He's in here before I am. <laughs> it's really strange. Do you, do, you think, do you think it's something to do with the magnetism of the moon? Could be. Because we're made of water and it draws the tide. Absolutely. And water. Yeah. Ah. What bloody tide? It's, it's quite a few miles inland. Yeah, but the pull will still be there. It's, yeah, exactly. The moon's going to pull whatever. Mm. Well, pull the t pull the tide all the way in. And, yeah, no, that's no, no, no. You've no, got no. water in your body. Yeah. And the moon will pull the Ooh, water in your yeah. body. Yeah. About 80% of water we're made of. Right. Yeah. Which is why you wake up on certain days. I bet it works out with the full moon that you're on one side of the bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. there, are two, there are two other people on the other side of the bed. On one. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's uh, like and just uh, and uh, and the only reason Anne takes part in these bloody classes is because she she this is the only laugh she has a whole week. And why is why is the moon female? Is it? Yeah, la ends with an A. Luna. La Luna instead of Luno. Yeah, I think it's the, that's that's the, the it's the twenty eight day thing again. I think. Ah. Yeah. Mm. You could have something there. Oh no, it's the man in the moon, isn't it? You're no, wrong. that's that's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> that's a modern thing. <laughs> when when men have realised they've missed out and got to jump in, they say it's a man in the moon. <laughs> or, or it could be women say, "Look, it's grumpy. It's got to be a man." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything to do? Is this anything to do with J Jules Verne? Then? Oh, well, yes, yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Wensleydale. When Wensleydale ice cream. No, the, uh, the it's made of Wensleydale. That's what. Cheese. Uh, yeah, cream you know, cheese. I prefer it made, made of ice cream. Cheese. cream. Yeah. That's yeah. where Wallace and Gromit went up there. Um, yes. Good to mm, Wensleydale. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Okay. Um, right. All right, then. Uh, I'm going to. Right. So, yes. <laughs> I, I I just yeah, this the same thing happened last week. I lost the bloody plot. Yep, and it's all gone out live. Yeah. It's all gone out live, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So 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 next next week, what what did somebody say? Right, next week I was supposed to be doing Doggerland next week, but I might. Uh, you were supposed to be I, doing I, new stuff in Wales. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Sorry. Mm. Yeah, I could do, I could do, I could do new stuff in Wales next week as planned, right? Mm. Uh, and there's some new stuff being found on Staff in Ireland, as I mentioned earlier on. We'll chuck a bit of Jersey in there, right? And we'll also yeah. chuck a bit of Isle of Man. Yeah. yeah. Something we can really get our teeth into. Did you? What uh, the hell? We... We've just done it. What, what have I been sitting here for two hours and 20 minutes? What the <laughs> hell have I just done? I was watching one of those treasure digging up treasure, whatever it's called, programs of the oh, day, yeah. and yeah. and they had a they had a mention of Jersey, which we we haven't done a lot of or mentioned much, in it? But no, finding the, the the biggest hoard of uh, was it medieval coins, oh. six and a half thousand. God, and you're thinking what? You're like yeah. not not a few hundred and some bits of ingots and things, six and a half thousand coins. Mm. That was in a giant's pocket. Must have, been, <laughs> must have been a bank or something. Uh, yeah, well, it's obviously nice been a tax haven yeah. for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Medieval. Yeah. Oh. I, can't, I can't, oh. can't remember what they were. Uh, like it was an early medieval, so Anglo-Saxon. What, like in the fields? Yeah, it was, yeah. They, got, they, they picked it up, they got a few off the top, and then he realised that it was a much Fjords. bigger hit underneath it. Uh, and and got the archaeologists in, and they, and they dug it up. It's just this massive, massive hoard of coins. It took yeah. ages to get out. Yeah. So. Is this anything to do with fjords? No. Fjords. 
I just thought I'd say it just to confuse you. Fuel. <laughs> Sure. I bet whoever put them there is gutted that they didn't well, get the fjords that are going. <laughs> Slarty Bardfast made the fjords. Did he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> 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 that, that was his thing, making the, making the fjords. You know where the fo- the furthest south or southerly most the fjord Bungos. is? What? Yeah. Who? If the most southerly fjord is. Where? The southerly fjord. It's in uh, Monte- Mont- Montenegro. Oh, right. Is it? Yeah. What, yeah. About the one, what about the one in New Zealand? No, they don't count. Yeah, they're, 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 that's very far yeah. south. That, yeah, that's true. That's very far south. A I mean, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. How did Slatty Barfast get to Montenegro? Yeah. Well, he obviously had a day off. <laughs> or, or maybe he had a bad day and he slipped. <laughs> that was Hitchhiker's Guide, was it? It was. Well done. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to think which cat. Was he the one with the two heads? No, Slatty Barfast oh. was just, we never saw him. That, that was. Oh. Um, uh, say for Beeblebrox oh, had the two heads. Yeah. 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 The president. He what threw himself talking? to the ground and missed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, what do you mean you didn't see slightly part fast? I thought we did. No, I don't, I don't think, I don't remember. I remember him coming up as being mentioned because he's the one that designed the fjords. But, uh, <laughs> but the, the frilly bits, I think they called them, didn't they? <laughs> did you read the restaurant at the end of the world? I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good. Did yeah. you uh, cows that want to be eaten? Yes. <laughs> Brought up to, to for their own purpose in life. Yeah. <laughs> Who do oh, have a piece of me? <laughs> and, and oh, the, and, and the paranoid android. Yes, the <laughs> manically <laughs> depressed robot. <laughs> well, you would be if you were as clever as me. <laughs> <laughs> Way ahead of its time. Oh yeah. It was another one of those trilogies that there were four of, though, wasn't it? <laughs> what four of them? Yeah, there was four. Brother, I've only read two. Yeah, uh, I can't remember what the other one, the last one was called because it was, I can't remember what they're called now. But the, yeah, there were four. Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy Hitchhiker's One, Two, Three, Four, Galaxy. and Five. Yeah, it, get, it gets caught up in cricket at the end, which is a bit weird. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, <laughs> very confusing. Good imagination. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Christ, on, on that note, guys, um, if is there anything else Anne, Margaret, Drina, and Andy wants to say? Oh, thank you. Nope. Oh, thank you. That was interesting <clears throat> and baffling mm. all at the same oh, time. Very, yeah. Very exciting, that one, yeah. I think. God, I'm so pleased nobody else was here tonight. We'd have gone on forever. Can you imagine if Claire was here, both of them? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> See, uh, Claire, she knows Claire a thing or two, though. She knows a thing or two, does Claire, doesn't she? Yeah. What? She, knows, yeah. she knows all her stuff. Hmm. Yeah, should, should I say in public? I'll break into her house one day just to see what is actually in that basement. Oh, Claire, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's, you'd be lucky to get in, mate. It's a chock a block. Is she still finding things? Oh, God, yeah. Is she? Yeah. In Lindale. Oh, you're always coming up with stuff. And, yeah. Oh. Uh, she's, she did have some, one of the, she found, um, was it a hand or a foot of one of the bodies we'd dug up when she was doing some more gardening back at the house? So she had that in her house for a while. Did she? Yeah, and giving it, giving it to the uh, the archaeologist to put with the rest of them now. So, so. Uh, yeah, good. Don't often come across hands and feet in at my be- bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might in Claire's. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wondered where that had gone. Yeah. <laughs> Got a new car now as well. Oh, please. Yeah, broke the other one. Oh, built a bit of the other one. Yeah, it just, it just broke down. It gave up and the guy in the garage said, uh, we were going to suggest you didn't get a new MOT on it anyway. He said, oh. now I needed a new back axle. This is just not worth it. So, oh. so she's got a little four fog. Oh, you piece it. Funnily enough, supplied her with a nice new car. So. <laughs> But, uh, oh, brand new car. Well, new for her. So. Oh, 1863. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, oh, nice, oh, nice little car, actually. So yeah. I did all right. Yeah. Little Ford Focus. Ah, nice. 
got to be done. Quite a good idea, and I think in the future they'll do this. Each town has um, like a, a a central area where they keep their cars, and when you want to use one, you just go and borrow one for the day. Mm-hmm. Instead of everybody having their own car, yeah. they could just go and hire one, couldn't they? Yeah. When you need one. Yeah. And put it back again. We have some schemes like that that not not for everyone, but um, carpooling. That yeah. Time. Yeah. That's been around. They, they do in my town of Barry. It's called Nick in a car, and then just driving up <laughs> somewhere else's car. <laughs> Well, I like, the, I like the idea of just going online, booking one, and it comes and takes you to the pub and then brings you home again without you having to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or, or even better, convince the uh, police you're a criminal, right? And and mm. they take you to the prison cells, you get somewhere to sleep and you get something to eat and drink. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they work out you're not a criminal, they take you all the way back to your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which has been burgled while you're out, so. Oh. By the police, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. Or you could be like that guy on the BBC, Alex Belfield, who's been in prison for five years. If you take the mickey out of seeing people in the BBC long enough, you get in prison for five years. It's great. That's, that's you get all perfectly your, reasonable. You get all your food and drink and, and <laughs> everything else. It's great. Good idea. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going with this anymore. Right. OK, that's it. OK, then. Uh, nice. All right, then. Okay, right. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll call it night and we'll see you all next week. Margaret's disappeared. She has. She's gone to sleep. She has this. Oh, she's frozen, isn't she? Yeah. She's frozen. Yeah. Is she? Oh, yeah, yeah she could have done actually. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, she's there. Okay. Anyway, all, all right, then we'll call it day. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that's another uh, two and a half hours. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Why don't I just find a topic that's like five minutes long and it goes on for an hour? <laughs> you know? Oh, Margaret's gone. Yeah, she yeah. just, I think she realized she'd frozen and gone. Yeah. She'll, yeah. she'll probably try and come back in a minute. <laughs> no, she's gone. No. Uh, all right, then, folks. Well, I'm going to call it a night. Drina, uh, nice to see you again. And Anne and uh, Andy and Margaret. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Margaret can't say goodnight, but uh, that's fine. So uh, I will. Okay. Good anyway, night. if there's nothing Bye. else anyone wants to say, Anne, um, Drina, um, Andy and Margaret, we'll, we'll call it a night and we'll see you next week. Yeah, no, it was really yeah. good. Really interesting. Thank Bye. you, mate. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Take care. Bye, night, guys. Bye, night. That was great. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, thanks for our online watcher there, Kylie. And that's good. So... Um, I'm going to call it a night now. There's nothing written in the box here, chat, which is a shame. And we're back on, on Thursday night, and we got our Thursday afternoon at 6 o'clock. Don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, everybody. And, uh, and that, that, was a, that was a long one, actually. Again, they're quite long, these. Two and a half hours. Sugar. So anyway, if nobody, uh, anyway, thanks for the people like uh, out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And 